Hello everybody and welcome to Tiger Tales, a place you'll find stories and fan fictions written and read to you by your host, me, Ty Tiger. Today we're diving back into Pokemon Time to Go. This is a semi-sequel to Pokemon. Uh, we never see Go actually complete his mission or see Go get any of the major gimmicks. So that is my goal in this storyline, is to give Go a a proper send off and see what happens if go after he and ash end up going their separate ways now in the last couple chapters he's been on the islands of alola and now he's about to get his first gimmick i'm very excited for this so let's go pokemon time to go chapter three goes z move i'm a champ appeared before the Team Galactic member. Call me Zero, the man called out. We're gonna call you Beat Down, Kawaii Bart. Go and Kawaii both throw out Pokeballs and Turtonator and Rockruff appeared. Wow, not very impressive, but I need Pokemon, so they'll do. Zero snapped. Shut up, Kawaii roared. Yeah, our Pokemon are just great, Go snapped. Whatever, but champ, body slam. Zero ordered. Machamp ran and slammed its body into Turtonator. The turtle Pokemon staggered back and grunted in pain. Rock Ruff, use bite! Go ordered. Rock Ruff ran at Machamp and bit onto one of its arms. The little dog hung there. Machamp swung his arm and Rock Ruff let go and was thrown to the ground. Use low kick! Zero told his Machamp. Machamp swung his foot and kicked Rock Ruff. The little dog skipped across the ground like a pebble across water. Rock Ruff, are you okay? Go called out. The dog stood up and barked, its body shaking in pain. Turtonator! Flamethrower! Kawaii called out. Turtonator breathed in and then released a massive stream of flame, which struck Machamp. The fighting type Pokemon stood there as the flames licked its body and it grunted as the flames hit it. Double slap! Zero barked. Machamp ducked and rolled under the flames, then jumped forward and slapped Turtonator twice. Across the face. Go ordered Rockruff to use Tackle. The dog Pokemon run at the four-armed Pokemon and tackled it. Machamp grabbed Rockruff, spun around, and slammed the dog Pokemon into the ground. Rockruff, just be careful! Go ordered. Rockruff jumped to his feet and barked several times at Machamp. Machamp and Zero both laughed, and Zero ordered Machamp to use Focus Punch. Machamp's fist started glowing, and it ran at Rockruff. Go ran and jumped in the way. It held his arms out. He stood there with a look of determination as he was ready to defend his Rockruff. Then suddenly, Tarnator jumped in the way and turned around to face him, the champ's focus punch hitting Tarnator's shell. Whoa, th th thanks Tarnator, Go said with a shock. Then Tarnator spun around to face Machamp. Kawaii crossed his wrist, and the Z-ring on his wrist started glowing, the Z-move insignia flashing before him. The zenith of my mind, body and spirit. Kawaii called out as both him and Tartanator both moved in synchronicity. Then Kawaii ended his movements with a slam of the foot and the energy rippled off of Kawaii and Sergeant Tartanator as they became one with each other. Inferno! Overdrive! Kawaii roared. Tartanator formed a gigantic sphere of pure fire and then unleashed it upon Machamp. Machamp had nowhere to go and no time to react as the Inferno Overdrive moved extremely fast. It hit Machamp head on. There was a massive explosion. As the flames died down, the smoke cleared and Machamp laid there unconscious. Damn it! That was a Z move. Zero sneered. Zero held out his Pokeball and returned the unconscious Machamp. Then he turned around and walked away. Hey, wait! Go called out. Please. Your rock rough is pathetic. I don't even want it. Zero snarled. Then he carried on walking. Go stood there stunned. He clenched his fist up in rage. His rock rough sat next to him and sighed. It's okay, rock rough. You're not pathetic. You just need to do some training, right? Go asked. Rock rough barked in agreement and bounded round Go. Go pulled out his Pokeball and returned the rock rough. Grokey cheered on Go's shoulder. Turn it. You did great. As always. Kawaii told his Pokemon as he stroked his neck. Then he returned Turtonator and approached Go. Thanks for the save. Go sighed. No problem. Did you know that guy? Kawaii asked. No, but I know the logo on his jacket. That was Team Galactic. I read about them. They were big trouble a while back. Go told him. Odd. Anyway, nice go with Rockruff. That was really good. You just had to not get caught up in it. Already knew how to handle uh, the, a Pokemon. That's impressive. Kawaii said with a grin. Thanks, I've been mastering my Pokemon battle skills, Go replied. Go and Kwai then went into town. Hey, Gary, 
Rito. Did you hear about that new podcast? What new podcast, Asu? It's called the Tiger Nexus Podcast, run by Ty Tiger. Hold on. I know that name. He's the guy behind Tiger Tales on YouTube, right? Yep, that's right. And now he's launched his own podcast where he interviews content creators and nerds of all kinds. No way, that sounds so cool. What's the name of the podcast again? The Tiger Nexus Podcast. You can find it on all major podcast platforms. Hold up, he's had Cosplay Dude 637 on there? That's amazing! I know, right? He's also interviewed A Crown, Mark the Red Corner Ranger, and many others. I am totally subscribing to the Tiger Nexus Podcast. I don't want to miss anything. Tune in to the Tiger Nexus Podcast by Ty Tiger for fascinating interviews with your favorite content creators and nerds. Find it wherever you get your podcasts. Don't miss out. The next day, Go stood in a field, his Rockruff and Alone and Judy facing each other. They were getting in some well-needed training. Okay, Rockruff, let's end this with a rock throw. Go Bart. Rockruff jumped into the air and several glowing rocks appeared and flew at Geodude. Geodude, dodge it and you stunned a punch. Go commanded. Geodude jumped back and its fist began to spark with electricity. It jumped forward and threw its sparking fist and Rockruff ran around the attack, dodging it swiftly. Yeah, nice job, you guys. Go cheered. Karuki cheered as it smacked its stick across the ground. Go returned his Pokemon and sat on the grass. He then took a deep breath and enjoyed the sun on his face. Then he saw something flying in the sky. It was Charizard. The large t- fire-type Pokemon landed and Go saw Kwai sat on its saddle. Good morning, Go, Kwai said as he jumped off. Hey there, Go replied as he climbed to his feet. So, Principal Oak actually asked for you. He has something for Professor Cersei, Kwai said with a slight confusion. Oh, that must be related to why he sent me here. Oh god, took long enough, Go stated. Okay, cool. Come on, Kwai said. Then a flash of light erupted from the forest. Whoa, what was that? Go asked. It looked like some sort of bolt of electricity, Kwai stated. Is that normal? Go asked him. Kwai shook his head. Shall we go and check it out real quick? Go asked it with a hint of curiosity. I am so down, but quickly, as the principal is expecting us, Kwai said with a cheeky grin. Go nodded and both of them jumped on Charizard. Kwai commanded it to take flight and Charizard launched itself into the air. The duo flew on Charizard's back and headed towards the forest. They saw several more flashes of light erupting between the trees. Charizard swooped down and landed within the trees. They hopped off and quietly returned Charizard and both the boys ran towards the flashes of light. The sound of electricity filled the air. They ran through some bushes and found Zero stood there with his machamp fighting Tapu Koko. Whoa, who is that? Go asked. Go pulled out his Rotom phone and the phone revealed a picture of the Pokemon. Tapu Koko, the lightning wielding guardian deity of Melimeli Island. Sometimes friendly. If it is attacked, it will retaliate, the Rotom phone explained. Go put his Rotom phone away and watched as Tapu Koko sent a massive thunderbolt attack at Machamp. Machamp swiftly dodged it. Hey, leave Tapu Koko alone, Kwai barked. Zero turned to Kwai and Go. Oh, you two again. Thought I was done with you two yesterday, Zero snarled. Leave Tapu Koko alone. It is important to Melimeli Island, Go said to him. Why do you care? You're not even from this region. Zero barked. I care about all Pokemon. The relationships we have with them are a privilege and should be not abused. And you're the one trying to capture an important one. I may not be from Alola, but I'll stand for it. Go barked. (laughs) You sound pathetic. Zero sneered. Go walked forward and stepped between Tapu Koko and Machamp, surprising Tapu Koko and Kwai. Leave this to me. Go said. He pulled out his Pokeball and threw it into the air, and it opened and a burst of light hit the ground, revealing Rockruff. Please, this pathetic runt again? Zero cackled. Yeah, and this time, we're gonna win, right Rockruff? Go said confidently. Rockruff barked with determination. Then Go commanded it to use Rock Throw. Rockruff jumped into the air and summoned several glowing rocks that rained down on Machamp. Zero commanded Machamp to use Karate Chop. The Pokemon ran at Rockruff and slammed its one hand down, hitting the small puppy Pokemon. Go ordered it to use Tackle, and Rockruff ran around Machamp and then tackled the back of Machamp's legs, and Machamp was forced to its knees. Rockruff jumped up and Go told it to use Rock Throw once again. The rocks rained down on the fallen Machamp as it grunted in pain as the rocks hit it. Yeah. 
Yeah, come on, girl, you got this. Kawhi roared from the sidelines. Go nodded and Grookey chapped on his shoulder. Go then was about to yell another command, but was interrupted by Tapu Koko, who floated in front of him, locking eyes with him. Whoa, Tapu Koko, what are you doing? Go asked it in shock. Tapu Koko then presented Go with a Z ring, with a Rockium Z crystal in the center. Wait, is that a Z ring? You want me to have it? Go asked. Tapu Koko nodded. The Z ring floated over and Go took it. He slipped onto his wrist and Tapu Koko floated up again, allowing Go's attention to return to the battle. Go turned the Rockium Z in the Z ring and then took a stance. Ready, Rockruff? Go roared. I can handle my future in the palm of my hand. Continental crush! Go yelled out. Rockruff slammed its two front paws on the ground as Go moved in swift movement. As the unified energies linked Go and Rockruff together, the puppy Pokemon jumped up into the air and barked loudly. A massive boulder formed above Rockruff and then threw its head forward and the boulder came crushing down, crushing Machamp. There was a massive explosion and once again left Machamp unconscious. What the hell just happened? Zero roared as he returned his Pokemon to its Pokeball. I just used my own Z-move with my own Z-ring and totally wiped the floor with my champ. Oh, and by the way, I used Rock Rough. Go cheered. Kwai grouped up with Go. Now leave Tapu Koko alone. Kwai roared. Zero sneered, then turned around and walked away. The duo then turned to face Tapu Koko. Go took off the Z-ring and handed it back to Tapu Koko. But the Pokemon sh shook its head and pushed Go's hand back towards it. Wait, you want me to have it? Thank you, Go said with a nod. He slipped the Z ring back onto his wrist and then Tabu Koko trapped and flew higher into the trees and disappeared within the leaves. Come on, we better get back to the principal. He's going to hear about this, Kwai noted. <laughs> yeah, Go replied. Then Kwai called out Charizard once again and both jumped onto the saddle. The Pokemon took flight and headed to the school. Go and Kwai jumped off of Charizard and Principal Oak walked up to them with a poke egg in hand. Hey, Principal Oak, this is Go. He's working for... Professor Sarcy, Kawhi told him. Ah, yes. Hello, nice to meet you. Welcome to the school. I believe you met several of my students already, Oak noted. Yeah, I have. They're all pretty awesome, Go replied. Oh, and what is this? You have a Z-ring, Oak asked. Yeah, Tabu Koku just gave it to me, Go cheered. Amazing, congratulations, Oak gleamed. Uh, so what's with the egg? Go asked, pointing at the egg in Oak's arms. Well, our beloved Lily has an alone in Volpex called Snowy, and she had this egg. She sent it for me to keep safe, but I was thinking maybe Professor Cersei would benefit from it more than me, Oak explained. So you want me to take it back to him, right? Go asked. Oak nodded. Consider it done, Go said with a thumbs up. He then took the egg from Oak and placed it into his bag. Grookey examined it with curiosity. Go then said his goodbyes to Oak, and Kawaii took him back to the ferry. Well, this is goodbye for now, Kawaii, Go said. Yeah, look after that Z-ring, okay? And remember, it's all about your bond with the Pokemon. You and Rockruff are going to get stronger, and next time, I want to battle you and Rockruff, Kawaii said with determination. Yeah, I will, I promise. We'll become a strong team. I still can't believe Tabu Koko gave it to me. Go said in awe. You know, I only know one other person who Tapu Koko gave a Z ring to. Kwai stated. Really? Who? Go asked. Ash. Kwai replied. Go grinned and Kwai explained how Ash got his Z ring. He should have guessed someone like Ash would have gotten his first Z ring from Tapu Koko. It was Ash, after all. Of course it was. Go chuckled. Go said his goodbye to Kwai, then he boarded the boat. And as the boat left the harbour, Go stood and waved. Kwai waved back, and Go stood there with a grin and a new sense of determination. He finally had a Z-ring, a new Pokemon to train, and now a new mission to deliver the Alolan Vulpix Pokey Egg to Professor Cersei. Go is ready for his next adventure, as the journey continues. Thank you everybody for listening to this video and checking out the stories. Of course, there are plenty more where that came from. I encourage you to check out the rest of this channel where you'll find more storylines for you to delve into. But there's even more than that. If you check out the description down below, you will find a whole array of different Tiger Tales channels. Each Tiger Tales channel is made for a specific purpose and hosts a whole array of different types of storylines. 
So I encourage you to check out the other Tiger Tales channels and delve into a massive amount of storytelling by myself and the Tiger Tales partners. If you have enjoyed it yourself today, then please subscribe to the channel as it does show your support. Now, of course, the whole reason why I'm doing this is because I'm passionate about story writing and storytelling. And, of course, you should dive into what you are passionate about as well. So, I shall end this video with... Roll with passion. That before we can... <laughs> Don't touch my Pringles. <laughs> Bye!